Hello everyone. Welcome to the Covert Knits podcast. My name is Abigail Covert. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is my podcast where I chat all about thing, everything yarn and knitting. If that is something you're interested in, I hope you stick around for the next bit as I have quite a bit to talk to you about. If you're new here, thank you so much for stopping by and checking out my podcast. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for sticking around while I took a bit of a hiatus. It was not planned, um, but I'll chat a little bit more about that at the end. Uh, you can find me on social media as at covert underscore knits on Instagram and covert knits on Ravelry. I'll have put them down here for you. And all of my show notes are listed in the description box below this video here on YouTube. Uh, I've been gone and I have quite a bit to chat about. Um, before I get started, today is Saturday, November 7th. I usually record on Sundays, but uh, my Sundays have been very busy lately, so that hasn't worked out, so I thought I'd do it this afternoon. It's a little bit later in the day than I normally record, so the lighting is a bit different, but I'm hoping it will work out okay. So Saturday, November 7th here in the U.S., I'm coming to you from Omaha, Nebraska, Today is the day that Joe Biden has officially been elected president of the United States. So congratulations to Joe and Kamala Harris. Um, I know a lot of us here in the US and around the world have been waiting for this day for a long time. So congratulations. Thank you all who went out and vote um, and voted and cast your vote and stood in lines and mailed in your ballots. It's it's paid off. Um, now we, we move forward and we still have a lot of work to do, but it's it's a really big day and I'm in a great mood so I thought today would be a perfect day to podcast and show you guys everything that I've been working on and purchased and there's a lot of purchasing. <laughs> um, I have actually not been knitting all that much. My knitting mojo has been a little um, lackluster I think with the stress of everything going on in the world between the pandemic and the US elections um, and just normal everyday things. My knitting mojo has taken a dive, but it feels like it's coming back. So I'm excited to chat with you all about my projects. Um, so let me go over really quick what we'll chat about today. Um, I have uh, what I'm wearing. I have uh, three finished objects uh, to share with you today. I have, I think I have four whips that I've been working on that I'll show you. Some of them have gotten more attention than others. So I'll show you those. And then I have a mountain, and I, I, I'll, I'll post a picture. Uh, if I think about it, I'll put a picture in here. Um, a mountain of purchases that I've made. Um, <laughs> as Caleb over at the Breeder Pearl likes to say, knitting and buying yarn are two separate hobbies, and I have definitely taken up the buying yarn hobby. I know that that is not a shock to many of you, but I've been doing it. So... I have lots to show. If stash enhancement is not your jam, I will let you know before I get started on that. But please be aware, I'm going to show you everything I've purchased in, since the last time we podcasted because all of these makers are amazing and I want to make sure that I'm sharing all of the amazingness with you guys. That's part of why I watch podcasts is to learn about new makers and new patterns and all of that kind of stuff. So, um, so yeah, we're going to chat a lot about that at the end. So I'll do... FOs and whips first and then we'll do stash enhancement and then just a little bit of chatter at the end not much and that should be it so grab your drink whatever your drink of choice is if I had champagne in the house it would be that today unfortunately it's just water um which we should be drinking more water so I <laughs> I'm working on that that's a, a goal for this week is to drink more water so if you'd like to join me in that it's very important so let's go ahead and get started we will start with what I'm wearing um, I'm wearing my Rift Tee, my first Rift Tee by Jacqueline Seaslack. Um, I'll stand up. It's uh, pretty cropped, not completely cropped. I did add some length to it. Sorry, you're going to get belly shot. And mine is V-neck in the front and boat neck in the back. You can kind of do it either way. This is a great lighter weight summer project um, for those of you in the Southern Hemisphere that it is summer now. Um, great project. I used um, a DK weight, but I used a cotton linen blend. This is knit out of Knit Picks Cotlin, um, and the colorway is Creme Brulee. I believe it's still available on their website. Um, yeah, it's a great project. Um, she does a great job with different sizing and whatnot. I'll talk a little bit more about that because one of my whips is another one of these uh, tees. So that's what I'm wearing now. Let's move on to FOs. My first FO is for 
uh, the Gilmore Long 2020 that I am co-hosting with Beth over at the MD Quilter Knits podcast. Uh, it ran, runs from September 22nd until the last day of winter here in the Northern Hemisphere, which I believe is December 21st. So any project that is either knit with yarn inspired by the Gilmore Girls, is a pattern inspired by the Gilmore Girls, um, or you can find a way to make the yarn or pattern seem inspired by the Gilmore Girls, you are entered to win. We are running it only over on Instagram using the hashtag GilmoreAlong2020. Um, you can go follow that hashtag, but just make sure anything that you're posting that you want entered into the uh, for prizes, which I have lots. I'll ha I have a few more to show here um, today. I have lots of prizes. So does Beth. We'll be pulling only from that Instagram, GilmoreAlong2020. Um, and we've got amazing prizes. So make sure you post pictures. Uh, it doesn't have to be an FO. You just have to have started a project um, with that theme in mind, uh, and you are entered to win as long as you use that hashtag. So follow the hashtag. There's amazing projects over there. Um, so my first Gilmore Long project that I have finished is this hat. It is... Um, it, the name of it is, sorry, I'm going to look on my phone. I should have had this pulled up, but I'm a bad podcaster today. Okay, the name of this hat is the Gilmore Inspired, Gilmore Girls Inspired Pom Pom Hat by Kristen McDonald. Um, it is a free pattern. I think you can purchase it on Ravelry, but I think there's a free version on her blog or website, um, which I will link to in the show notes below. Um, I knit this using, um, Gnome Acres, uh, who's no longer dying. So this yarn is only available if you can find it through a D stash. And this was her MCN base, which is fancy, fancy gnome, I believe. Sorry, I'm looking at my notes again. Yes, fancy gnome and the colorway was Stars Hollow, which is a Gilmore Girls reference. Um, put this on for you. So it's a two by two rib and then it switches to a three by one rib, I believe, or three by two. And then it has some really interesting crown decreases. And uh, this pom-pom I purchased, I don't know who the maker was. Um, I've lost the tag for that. I purchased it several years ago from a yarn shop in Fort Collins, Colorado. I uh, It is from the My Sister Knits yarn shop. I don't believe that they have an online web store, but I think you can call them and uh, check to see if they have this. And I know that they ship. So. Um, that is the pom-pom. I just, it has a ribbon tie, so it's just tied in there right now so that it can be removed so that the hat can be washed. Um, I was originally thinking this would be a gift knit, but I'm fairly certain that this will be my new fall and winter beading. Um, I believe this calls for a DK or worsted weight, uh, yarn. I used fingering weight held double. This yarn is variegated and it only really has three colors in it. And the color repeats um, were fairly short, so it would have pooled quite a bit if I used it singly in a different uh, pattern, like a sock head hat or something like that. The yarn would have pooled quite a bit, and I didn't really want that to happen with this yarn. I wanted it to be more variegated, stripey like this. So I held it double, which worked out great. Um, this is what I have left. Oh, I have the tag for the yarn. This is what I have left of the skein. Um, and here is the no makers tag. It's been so long since I've done this. And it is 435 yards for 100 grams. Okay. Oh. So that is that. That's my first project. Again, I don't have a lot of projects to show, even though it's been about eight weeks since I podcast just because I haven't been knitting much. So this is the first project. Set that aside over here. The next project I finished is one I'd had on the needles for a while. This is a gift and I actually, um, it's a birthday gift for a friend's child and the child turned uh, two um, a couple weeks ago and I still haven't gotten it to them mostly because I wanted to show it to you guys. But this is the child's mix and match sweater. Uh, the pattern is by uh, Mina of the Knitting Expat, Knitting Expat Designs on Ravelry. And 
it's got this beautiful texture on it. The mix and match pattern, I've actually knit it before. You can knit it um, plain stockinette or uh, with a texture. You can knit it with a high-low neck um, and a high-low back. It, it, it's it got options for DK and worsted weight. I knit mine using DK weight. I used Miss Babs. Let me get my tag here. I have it ready. Um, let's see here. I used Miss Babs yarn. It's her Yowza. Uh, which is a DK weight. It is... Um, or they call it a light worsted, but I would I knit it at a DK gauge. Uh, 560 yards, so it's a huge skein. It's 100% superwash merino, and this colorway was uh, blue bonnets. I've had this in my stash for quite some time. So I knit, even though the child that I knit this for is only turning two, I actually knit the four to six year old size um, because I they they're tall for their age so I wanted to make sure that it was long enough and it's it is a little girl so I know that she will be able to wear this as kind of a sweater dress this winter and uh and then grow into it for next winter so there's the front there's the back I did do the short rows on the um, neckline so you can see that the front is a little bit shorter than the back but I did not do the high low hem I just kept the hem even all the way around and I really love this pattern uh, again it's the second time I've knit it uh, Mina is one of my favorite designers I love her patterns I love the way they're written um, and this yarn was amazing to work with so much so that I have now purchased a uh, partial sweaters quantity I still have to purchase a little bit more for myself in this Yowza um, to do um, a raglan sweater for myself so I will show you that when I will get to purchase this uh, let's see, I knit this on, I believe size sevens, yes, and this, it was a, again a 560 yard skein, this is what I have left. So I was able to get the four to six year old size with the texture pattern out of one skein of Yowza. And because it was one skein, I did not have to, um, I did not alternate skeins because it was just one um, you can tell that there's a little bit more yellow and green up at the top a little bit more blue at the bottom that's okay I like how that looks um, several people have told me that it looks like uh, Van Gogh's Starry Night um, or uh, Monet painting um, so there we go that is finished object number two and let's go to FO number three this one is another hat. Let me get it out. I have it stored in the little bag it came in. The yarn came in. Okay. Sorry about that. So this hat is the slipped rib stitch, slipped rib hat by Jody Brown of the Grocery Girls. It's one of her hat, most recent hat patterns. I think it came out this summer. Um, it is one skein of DK. And then um, you do some slipped rib with uh, a skein of mohair that you hold double. So that's what's in the window panes and gives it the nice halo. Let's see if we can, there you go. You can kind of see some of the halo there. Okay, so I purchased this in a kit from Aves Fiber Works. Let me get their tag. Came in this cute little muslin bag. I actually got three of the kits. So Aves Fiber Works. Okay, and the DK is their Merino DK. It was a 50 gram skein, 114 yards. This is what I have left. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then the mohair is 72% kid mohair, 28% silk, mulberry silk, and this colorway is pink cockatoo. All of their colorways are based on um, bird names. So I got the kit from them and it came with the pom-pom. So this kit, kit, according to the pattern, I should have been able to knit the large size um, with 50 grams of DK. I weighed the DK. It was not quite 50 grams. It was a tad shy. It was about 49 grams when I, when I weighed it before I started knitting. And I made the medium size and actually had to cut out two repeats of the pattern. Now, I did not gauge swatch for a hat. 
I don't gauge swatch at all, but I definitely didn't gauge swatch for a hat. Um, but it has twisted rib along the bottom and that does eat up quite a bit of yarn. Um, so I knew pretty early on that I wasn't going to be able to get the full size out of the hat. So this is much more of a beanie as opposed to a slouchy hat. Um, it does fit. Put it on for you. And I like it quite a bit. I was planning to make it a gift, but I'm not sure that that will work for the person I was thinking it would. So I don't think that will happen this uh, now, but it is nice. I, I like the pattern. I will continue to make the pattern. Um, and I will use the other kits that I purchased to make this pattern, but I probably will also make the pattern out of yarn that I have that has 100 grams for the DK so that I um, can get the full length out of it. So yeah, that was a little disappointing. Uh, again, uh, with the pom-pom, I need to secure this one. This one does not have um, a stabilizer, so I'm going to use just a, a plastic button to run the yarn through to hold it in place so it's not quite so wobbly. I just haven't done that yet, but it is just tied on with a bow so that it can be removed um, and the hat can be washed. So especially if I'm, you're going to gift it, that's always important. So that is the slipped rib hat by Jody Brown. I really enjoyed knitting it. It was a super quick, fast knit. I think I knit it in two evenings of knitting, um, which is really nice with the way, you know, my brain has been lately with everything going on. So it was nice to get that out of the way. And if I did decide to give this as a gift, it would be one more Christmas gift done. So anyway, that is my third and final FO for this uh, podcast. Again, not a lot. My knitting has been slow going. So I'll take a drink here. And now let's move into whips. I have four, well, technically five. Um, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, whips that I'm working on. Let's start with the one that hasn't gotten a lot of work. This is my second Rift Tee by Jacqueline Cizak. Um, it is being housed in one of my uh, bearded pearl bags. This is an old one that I've had forever. But I just love it. Their bags are great. They're my favorite bags. I've said that on a number of occasions. I have so many of them. Um, you'll see them pop up regularly. Okay, so part of the reason this was on hold, and I think I talked about this on the last podcast, was that I had to rip back. Um, I was actually almost completely done with this and realized I was going to run out of yarn, and I made it way, way too big. Again, I don't swatch. I don't gauge. I was trying to remember what I'd done on this sweater, and I totally measured wrong. So I had to rip back all of the front, most of the back. And I am back knitting again. I have... Um, I have started doing, I had to rip back all the way to here. So I've, I've knit all of this. Um, so I've split for the front and the back. So the, the body is done. I've split for the front and the back, which really just means I have to do the front, the back from the shoulder split to the top and then seam them together. And then the arms are literally just an inch or so of ribbing. So if I just sat down and worked on it, if I had the brain space to do so, this would be done so quickly. Um, this is being knit out of, I don't think I have a ball band, but it's the same yarn as this. It's Knit Picks, uh, Kotlin. It's a DK weight and it is a hundred or it's, I think it's 70, 30 cotton linen. Uh, I really like it. I really like the, the feel of it. It doesn't feel too cottony to me. It washes up really nicely. Um, and I like the colors. This color is cyan. And I have eight balls of it, and I'm knitting this on size sevens. Which I think is one size down from what the pattern calls for, but I did that on this one as well. I liked the fabric better. Um, that You can see it's got some creases in it because it's been balled up in this project bag for so long. So maybe now, after today, some of my mojo will be back a little bit and I can get some more work done on this. I would love to have this done. Even though it's a great summer piece, it is actually also a great layering piece. I have a couple of shirts that I uh, layer this over when I have to um, go into the office, which I'm not currently doing. I am still working from home. Um, but when I have to go into the office and I need to dress up, it's a great layering piece. Okay. So that is my Rift T again by Jacqueline Cizlak. It is a paid for pattern. That next is um this is my I'm knitting hmm 
It is called the Long Line Cardigan by Hohe Locatelli. I believe this is only my second or third Hohe project. So I'll put a picture up here for you. I am knitting this out of Sweet Georgia Yarns Tough Love Sock. I bought a kit that came with a gradient. There's the tag. Uh, it came with a gradient that goes from this very, very light gray, which is called Ice Flow, all the way to a uh, like an almost black. So it goes from this to this one, which is Snowfall. It's a little bit darker gray. And then we go into this gray, which is silver, which I have a sweater's quantity of this gray. And then we go into the darkers. So this one, which is slate and then we go into this one which is this one is charcoal and then finally this one which is cauldron so that is the color sequence um, this pattern doesn't call for a gradient sequence, but that is, I found a couple of uh, projects over on Ravelry that did do a gradient. So I'm kind of following their instructions and I'm just going to slightly fade it in. Um, I'm just going to do that on my own. So I've started, it start, Hohe's patterns always kind of start in interesting places. This one starts at the middle of the back neck um, for this shawl color. So I've done that and now I've picked up stitches all the way around. It's almost like a really large garter tab, except it's not garter. It's, um, it's ribbing. I think it's even tw twisted ribbing. I'm not sure. I can't remember. There's the front. So this will be the outside. And then I've picked up and started the stockinette. So this pattern is awesome because this ribbing panel will go from the middle of the back of the neck all the way down the front and then everything else is stuck in it except for the sleeves cuffs cuffs and and the hem so everything else is stuck in it so it's just stuck in it all the way down so i would like to get really going on this to get this to the point where it's splitting for the sleeves i'm thinking that this will be a project that i hopefully get back to this week i'm not putting a lot of pressure on myself but i am enjoying it now i had some issues with um, picking up the stitches you do a provisional cast on and you have to pick up some stitches and getting my stitch counts right, right but that is all fixed now so um, yeah I am knitting this on a US 4 which is 3.5 millimeter okay so that is that it is being housed in my quiet queers craft along tote that I purchased for the craft along this summer Okay, next is my second and third um, Gilmore Along projects. And you'll see why it's kind of both in a second. This bag is covered with animal fur. So welcome to my house. We have three dogs and two cats here. This is in a Lila Styles bag. It's a Gilmore Girls themed bag. I Smell Snow, which is from the, the show. It has a cute little progress keeper attached. I don't like progress keepers on my knitting, so I usually keep them on the bags. Okay, so this is just a pair of plain vanilla socks, um, and I have the first ones done. I knit my socks two at a time, but they, this yarn came in balls, already uh, the gobstopper balls, already wound up, and I didn't want to rewind it, so I had two skeins, so I just picked two colors. So I cast on and knit the first two socks, just like I was knitting, um, you know, a pair of socks, but just different colors. Um, these yarns are from Nomadic Yarns. Let's see if I've got a tag here. I know I do somewhere. I can feel it. Okay. So Nomadic Yarns. And this colorway is Oi with the Poodles already. And this one is I Smell Snow. So again, Gilmore Girls themed color yarns. Oh no, I dropped a sock, hold on. Ooh, sorry about that guys. Okay, so I've got two done. Oi with the poodles already. 
That one I just used um, black, some black I had in stash for the heel. And then this one is I Smell Snow. And I use this kind of caramely brown. Um, I believe this is a Loopy U solid. So that, those are done. And I am working my way down the legs of socks two, number two. So when this is done, I'll have two pairs of socks, which is kind of fun. Um, and I have a lot of no maker or no makers. I have a lot of nomadic yarns, um, gobstoppers in some of her, I think she's renamed them, but her original Harry Potter colorways. And, um, I think I'll do this for a lot of them where I'll do two pairs of socks at once so that I don't have to rewind the yarn. So that's what I'm working on. I've got 40 rounds done on the leg of these and I'm doing 60 rounds before I put in the heel. So there we go. I apologize guys. My phone is buzzing. So I'm going to turn that off just one second. Okay. Sorry about that. So that is projects uh, three and four. It's kind of fun to have two projects at once. And my final project that I've been working on, my final whip, is also in another bearded pearl bag. This is my most recent one. This is my sweater size bag that I purchased from them. I love it. They've got new tags on them. They've got nice handles um, there and there with the contrasting color, zipper, box bottom. I love this bag. I love their bags. I can't say it enough. I say it all the time, so you know, I'm sure you're tired of hearing it. Okay, so this is my Gramps cardigan. Oh, oh my goodness. The vanilla socks that I'm knitting are the Mina's two at a time sock pattern by the Knitting Expat. I will have made sure to put that on the screen somewhere, but just to make sure I say that pattern out loud, I knit my socks two at a time, cuff down, 64 stitches on US two and a half. No, on two and a half millimeter US one and a half. Man, it's been a while since I podcast. Okay, so this is my Gramps cardigan. Back to this one uh, by Tin Can Knits. I am knitting this out of, again with the knit picks, this is Wool of the Andes Tweed. It's their worst of weight. The colorway is Wellies Heather. It's this kind of, um, I mean, it's almost black. It's more charcoal with lots of Tweedy Flex. And I have split for the sleeves. That's what the red is and knit down the body. I've knit about 13 inches on the body. I have to get to 17 before I switch over to do the ribbing. So this one is coming along. This just very back and forth knit, knitting the knits and purling the pearls stockinette is really getting me through this election season. So this, any knitting time that I've had recently has been devoted to this. I've actually put most of the body on in the last three days. So um, I think I was, I had about an inch and a half to two inches of body um, about three days ago. And this is what I've knit since. So um, mostly in the evenings, just knitting along. You can see I've got ends to weave in in there, but I'm not worried about that. I love it. I love how this is turning out. I love the fabric. Um, this is going to be a great, really warm, sweater to wear. It does have a bit of a shawl color. So I'll do the body and then um, I'll do my, I'll knit my sleeves two at a time and then I'll pick up for the shawl color. So this is a uh, tin can knits. Their patterns are great. This is not a free pattern. It is a paid for pattern, um, but they size in a very size inclusive size range from child. I think the, it's a six month size up to a four XL. So I'm knitting the, the, 2XL, I believe. Yeah, I'm knitting the 2XL size. Um, again, I didn't gauge swatch. You know that isn't going to happen. I am using US 7s, which are a 4.5 millimeter, um, which I believe is what the pattern calls for because, again, with the gauge swatching, the color looks good there. Anyway, so that is my fifth and final whip. And it probably as soon as I'm finished here videoing and editing, this is what I'll be going back to this evening while I watch all of the coverage. So we are 30 minutes in. 
and I am just about to get started on the stash enhancement. We'll probably take almost the same amount of time as what I just showed you. So stash enhancement is not your thing and you would like to check out now. I totally understand. Um, thank you for joining me today and I hope that you'll return soon. If you do want to see all of the stash enhancement, stick around. So let us start. I'm not even sure where to start. Um, we'll start here. Uh, I will make a note that some of this is um, from Rhinebeck weekend. Uh, I was had a, been planning to attend Rhinebeck in person for the first time this year. Uh, I had my Airbnb booked and everything. When they canceled the in-person event, I canceled that. Um, and I hesitated on joining the, um, the virtual events. But a friend of mine in one of my knit night, uh, Omaha knit night evenings, said that she was doing it. And, you know, I started to look at the website, uh, both the New York Sheep and Wool website, which is what Rhinebeck is, if you are not familiar. Um, it's a large fiber festival in upstate New York. It happens every third Oct uh, weekend in October, every year. Um, and so she kind of encouraged me. And so I looked at their website. I looked at the Indian Tangled website. I looked at online at different separate events that were being hosted for that weekend. So I ended up uh, doing some shopping, taking part. I didn't take any part in any classes, but I did take part in several um, online uh, chats and virtual events. And it was a lot of fun. It was so much fun. So I had gone into Rhinebeck uh, originally in person with a budget. And um, I kind of tried to keep that budget in mind while I was uh, doing the virtual version. And I, I don't really feel bad about the amount of yarn I purchased, but I do want to make sure everybody knows that this is not normal. This is me coping with the world right now, um, with how much I've been shopping. And also I have the privilege and the luxury to have a steady job and to not have a partner or children that I need to care for. It's just me. So I have disposable income that I choose to do what I want with. And uh, yarn is usually where that disposable income goes. Uh, it's embarrassing sometimes, but it's that's how it goes and that's how I choose to use it. And that's not an excuse. I'm not trying to defend what I, what I purchased. I just want to make sure that people know that I know that this is ridiculous <laughs> um, and that not everybody wants or would even be able to purchase this much yarn. But over the past eight weeks, I have purchased this much yarn and some other goodies as well. So um, actually, we're going to start with something that I don't have here to show you. I'm going to post a picture right here. Um, this is a fruit hammock that I purchased on Etsy from San Diego Macrame. I'm going to put, there's her, and I'm going to post, there's her um, information. It's Leslie over at San Diego, San Diego Macrame. I really wanted something to get our fruit up off the counter. Um, I've just dropped that on the floor. <laughs> um, so I was searching and I just put in fruit basket in, you know, the Google engine as uh, search engine and it came up with, you know, metal bins on Amazon and Target. Uh, but then this one popped up and it was handmade um, by a local maker in, not local to me, but you know, a small t maker in San Diego. And uh, it was the same cost as anything I would have purchased on Amazon or Target after shipping and all of that stuff. So I immediately snapped it up and it was shipped within just a few days. I had it within a week. It was perfect. Um, I love it. It's been fantastic for what we needed it for. So if you're looking for things that you um, need in your everyday life, but might want something just a little out of the ordinary, I'm not advertising for Etsy, but make sure you check out local makers because they are doing some awesome stuff out there. And if this I'm sure the reason it popped up on my Google is because I Google so much um, yarn and knitting and crochet things anyway. So just, you know, make sure that you're looking at that. I would not have thought to, to search um, for something like this uh, through Etsy or any other, you know, maker uh, venue. So that's just my little PSA for the day. So fruit basket. Okay, uh, that was first. And then I actually won a prize um, during Rhinebeck weekend. So I'm going to show you that. It was from Mina of the Knitting Expat. I was on a chat with her through Indie Untangled with several, lots of other people. Um, and she was doing kind of door prizes. And so my name was called, which was really exciting because, you know, all know I'm such a fangirl. So I'm there's going to be lots of crinkling. I'm apologizing now. But uh, 
Okay, so I won a prize that she gave me through. Um, she gets the knit crate boxes and oftentimes I think those are, um, she gets them as kind of promotions and she uses those as prizes. So what I got was part of uh, originally a knit crate box. So I don't think that you can purchase it. Um, it is the yarn I got was knitology by knit crate. So it's a skein of their sock yarn, this beautiful mustard color, and it's called Tuscan sun. It's 75, 25, Merino nylon, 437 yards. So that is, was the yarn I got. She sent along the Knit Crate Inspirations book. It looks like it was the August 2020 sock box. And the the pattern book, or the book comes, shows you all the different um, boxes that you could have gotten. And, um, and then it comes with several patterns. Uh, this one comes with four patterns, I believe. Yeah, this comes with four patterns, both knit and crochet um, for the different boxes. But you get all the patterns. So um, she sent that along, which was really nice of her. And then she sent along this, um, and I'm not sure if it came in the box originally, but she sent along this Progress Keeper from Tia's Terrific Threads. And it's a little succulent plant. It's super cute. Uh... There's the, um, she, oh, she's an indie dyer and crafter. Tia's Terrific Threads. She's out of Rochester, New York. There's more of her information. I'll put that, again, down below in the, um, in the description box. So she sent those along as part of the prize. And then she also included, she's been doing watercolors, and she also included a few prints of her, um, some of her watercolors um, as cards with some envelopes included. Let me pull them out here just a second. So they, she sent along the cards or the envelopes and then she sent me three different prints. So I've got this one and these are not card. They're just single so you can write on the back and then this is the front, or if you don't want to send them, um, you could frame them. So she sent this one. She sent this fruit one, which I love. I love the blues and oranges. Oh, that one's gorgeous. That one might get framed. And then she sent this envelope of flowers. So aren't those great? And you can buy um, sets of cards from her, also digital downloads from her um, in her Etsy shop, which I believe is Mina Makes. And again, that will be linked in the description box below. So that was really awesome. Thank you, Mina, so much for taking the time to chat with us, but also doing prizes. You didn't have to do that, and it was awesome to win something. Um, I never win anything, uh, which is fine. I don't really need anything. Uh, but it was really awesome to be able to kind of listen to her chat and talk about her new projects uh, upcoming, which this was several weeks before she released her new um, Cowles book, which is out now. And she just released it in the last couple days. I purchased a copy. I'll put a screenshot of the um, the ebook here so you can see it. It's nine different Cowles inspired by um, the designs of rugs from Persia. It's beautiful. The, the color work, it's all color work. They're absolutely stunning. So go check that out if you haven't had a chance yet. It is for sale on Ravelry and Etsy. And she's doing um, pre-orders for a hard copy. I purchased the ebook version, but you can pre-order a hard copy of the book as well. And it looks gorgeous. So, okay, so that's Mina. Okay, next up um, from, uh, let's go with this one. Um, Area 51 Fibers, who's been an awesome supporter of the uh Gilmore Girl Long. It, uh, I ordered some yarn from her and I ordered a couple of Gilmore Girls colorways. So this one is Lorelei. It's a self-striping fingering weight. This is her Sturdy Alien, which is an 80-20 Merino Nylon. And then this one is Rory. So I ordered, I actually ordered two of each color because one set is for me and the other set is going to be a giveaway for the uh, prize for the knit along. So somebody will be lucky enough. I'll probably give these away together. 
So, Area 51 Fibers. She's out of Canada. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. So, I purchased those skeins. And also, I purchased... She had a an Advent pre-order. So, I I think everybody has seen these. But if you haven't, if you ordered an Advent pre-order for her for the Gilmore Girls colorway, um, that I'm going to show that here now. So, this is Christmas with the Gilmores. It's... Um, already wound up into two 50 gram skeins so I can have matching socks. I will be casting these on on December 1st. Again, this is on her sturdy alien base. And this was, she had two different advent calendar, uh, advent colorways, but this was the Gilmore Girls one. Again, Christmas with the Gilmores. So that I purchased from Area 51. So stick those back in here. Okay, um, then I purchased from some more Gilmore themed yarn. See a theme here? Um, a yarn dyer that I had heard of but hadn't really looked at their shop. This is That Yarn Habit. She is out of, I think she's out of Grand Prairie, Alberta, Canada, up by the Cozy Up Knits girls. Um, so I purchased two different colorways from her. This one is uh, the Gilmore Girls inspired, or collection, You Jump, I Jump Jack. Which I love one of my favorite episodes so um and then this one is Gilmore Girls Collection Coffee 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 which I am I've been loving the oranges and reds this season so this is right up my alley so it's that yarn habit she's on Etsy so I purchased those from her but also she does these sweaters sweatshirts where she prints things on them and so she had this one, Stars Hollow, founded 1779, which is obviously a Gilmore Girls thing. So I purchased this from her. She, there was a bit of a mishap because she um, she sent me the wrong package. She was very nice um, and let me know right away and let me keep what she sent in the original package, which was this sweater, which said in rose gold sparkle, Indie Dyer, which I am not. But... It's beautiful and I love it. And just because I'm not, so that was that yarn habit. You can get ones that say knitter. I know I've seen them on other podcasts that people are buying them. So I got the Star Hollow one and now I have the Indie Dyer one. And I just thought that that was a bit prophetic. So uh, if you've been around a long time, you'll know. Oh, geez, guys. Sorry. Hold on. Okay, so if you've been around a long time, you'll know that I've always wanted to dye yarn, but I've never had the courage. So since I got the Indie Dyer sweatshirt, I figured I'd buy the hand dyeing yarn book and a starter kit of dyes. So I purchased this set um, from Knit Picks. I'm gonna open this here for you. So it comes with the book. It comes with three skeins of bare yarn, and it comes with a, this box of dies. Dies. Pull one out here so you can see. Um, along with the citric acid um, that you need the that you need for the dye to stick. I don't know. I'm still learning. I haven't dyed anything yet, so I got the this set with three skeins of fingering or of yarn from Knit Picks. But three skeins isn't enough for me. So I purchased 10 skeins of bare yarn. <laughs> Cause I have a problem. Okay, I don't remember what it came with. I think this is one of the ones it came with, which is uh, Wool of the Andes, which is their uh, worsted weight, which all of this is bare. So um, 220 yards for 100 grams. So I got that one. Um, and then this is Gloss Fingering, which is a 70 Merino 30 silk fingering weight. I think this one is one of the ones that comes in the, in the package. Um, and then... I got a skein of Stroll Fingering 
bear 462 yards it's fingering weight and their stroll fingering is what's the 75 25 merino nylon so one of those i think that's what came with it i purchased um two more skeins of the stroll fingering so i've got three skeins of that and then i purchased three skeins of their swish fingering which is 437 yards. It is uh, 100% superwash merino. And then I purchased two bare skeins of their Felici. They are 100 gram skeins. Um, this is 75.25, and this is what they make their Felici striping out of. So in all, I've got 10 skeins of bare yarn and enough uh, dye to do, I think it's up to three pounds of yarn. So, um, Somewhere down the line, I'll be dyeing yarn. Uh, my sister and I have long, uh, I'm not sure if I've mentioned this on the podcast, but my sister uh, lives with me and she has a, a separate space in the basement here in my home. And she uh, and I, she has a great eye for color. She's quite the artist. I never think of myself as an artist. I, I think of myself as a knitter, but not really an artist. Um, but she is an artist, a uh, painter, drawer. She's an artist. Her sense of color oftentimes I ask her opinion when I'm um, putting together colors for a knitting project because I just trust her opinion so much on colors so we have long talked about collaborating together on knitting or dyeing yarn um, me coming up with some ideas and her really putting the colors together um, and learning how to do it together so at you know it, it won't ever be well who knows what it will be but um, it's not my intention for that to be a, a business venture or anything like that. Just something to try out for fun and something we can do together. Uh, if you've met either of us, we are vastly different people. Um, very, very different. And uh, we love each other, but we don't have a lot of things that overlap. So when we find things that overlap, we really like to um, try to enjoy them together. So, okay. So that is my Knit Fix haul. Um, what else? Okay, um, I purchased from, where did it go? Okay, so a few months ago, I had purchased uh, three skeins from Dyed by Dells um, from Les Garçons. Les Garçons. Uh, Vincent and Max have the Les Garçons Boutique. Um, all of the, the links are below, but Vincent dyes yarn and his um, yarn dyeing handle or business is Dyed by Dells. And I had purchased a blue, um, a creamy white, and a, a harvest wheat color um, of his fingering weight BFL. Um, so I wasn't sure what I was going to do with that. I thought it was going to be a three skein shawl, but I've decided it is actually going to be Max, his partner, in uh, his partner's pattern. Um, he has a once in floral, which has um, roses along. It's color work, yoke sweater, um, and then just. Uh, stockinette body, but color work yoke. So I purchased uh, four more skeins of the navy blue, which is called uh, Harry's Suit. And again, it's his BFL, Superwash BFL Nylon 8020. It's 400 yards per skein. I'm gonna leave it in the packaging just because it's all nice and neat in there. So I purchased four now. I have one other one um, for my previous and then the two skeins of the contrasting, which is enough to do the sweater in my size. So that is way down the road. I've never done a color work. I've done color work on small cowls, hats, um, finger, fingerless mitts, but I've never done a color work yoke sweater. So that is down the road. So that will be that project. And then that a lot of what I'm showing right now was purchased on Rhinebeck weekend. So let's continue with that. Um, this is from Cece's Wool. This was their Rhinebeck colorway. So I purchased two skeins of this. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, Cece's Wool. Isn't this colorway amazing? Again, with the oranges and the reds. So this is her Oh Rhinebeck, We Miss You colorway. Superwash Merino Yarn Baby. So it is 8 ounces, 1120 yardage. 1,120 yards per skein. So I have over 2,000 yards here of a fingering weight uh, and it's, it is plied. I was thinking it was single ply, but it's, it's looks like it's a two ply. It's pretty loosely plied, maybe a three ply. I don't know if you can see that. Anyway, so I'm going to be making, I think I'm going to be making 
Igneous by the Knitting Expat. Oh, we're about to have a yarn collapse. Um, but yeah, I can knit the whole sweater in my size out of two skeins. So I bought two of these in this beautiful color with a little bit of the green. I will alternate skeins here um, because of all the variegation in the colorways, but I just love it. I cannot wait. That's what that is going to be. Okay, so that is Cece's wall. And then also on Rhinebeck weekend, um, I'll take one of these out. I made a purchase from uh, Harrisville Designs. I've long been wanting some of their Nightshades yarn, uh, which is a woolen spun worsted weight, or DK weight, I'm sorry, woolen spun DK weight yarn. Um, it is American Cormo and wool. It's approximately 250 yards for 100 grams. So these are usually um, the natural dark kind of black almost charcoal colors with um, then there's you can get it in red or teal or whatnot uh, spun with it. I actually got mine with the white spun so it's a little bit lighter than um, some of the others because it's got the white in there. So this colorway is called static. So I got a sweaters quantity of this um, I'm not sure yet what sweater it will be, but it is a DK weight, so it will be a sweater. And this is a yarn I've been coveting for a while. I long knew that come Rhinebeck weekend, this was a purchase I wanted to make if I was there in person or virtually. So that was a long time coming. I was really excited to be able to get my hands on that. So Harrisville Designs, Nightshades. Next up, I also purchased from Miss Babs. Uh, yarn, I, as I said when I was speaking earlier, um, they oftentimes do special colorways for the festivals. So this year she had two for Rhinebeck. Um, I purchased the colorway Apple Season, her Rhinebeck 2020 color. So this is one of the skeins of Yaoza. I got two of these. I'm actually going to see, I think it's still available on the website, so I think I'm going to order two more because since these are 560 yards a skein, um, Four will be plenty. That's over 2,000 yards of DK weight to, or light worsted DK to knit um, a sweater for myself. And I think it'll be a Cozy Classic Raglan by Jessie Mae. Um, that's a pattern I've been wanting and dying to knit for a while. Knowing I wanted to do it with a variegated kind of speckly yarn, I think it will look really nice. Very simple, um, simple pattern, but really let the yarn shine. So Miss Babs yarn in colorway... Again, it's her Yauza DK, and the colorway is Apple Season. So I got two of those, and then I also purchased that same colorway in, she had a new base that she premiered um, during Rhinebeck, which is Sonatina, Sona, Sonatina. It's a fingering weight. It's 75 Superwash Merino, 25 nylon. It's 390 yards per skein, and this is also the Apple Season colorway in that yarn. And I actually think I'm going to double this up and knit a Gilmore Girls inspired pom-pom hat, like the first hat I showed in my FOs, with this yarn. Because I think it would be absolutely fantastic. So that will probably be a hat. Might be knit up soon. That's what I purchased from Miss Babs over Rhinebeck. And I think my final true Rhinebeck purchase was yet another sweater quantity of yarn. I'm not done with sweater quantities. Um, I purchased and have been wanting from uh, to purchase a sweater quantity from Magpie Fibers. Um, there's her, the card. So when Hohi Locatelli released her Rituals pullover, which is a new uh, sweater pullover pattern that she has, has a little bit of lace and stripes, I knew I had to knit it, and I've been wanting Magpie yarn for so long, I knew this would be the perfect complement. So the Rituals Pullover, um, I'm going to use, this is Magpie Swanky DK in colorway Bougie Beaver. This will be my main color. I've got five skeins of that. And then the contrasting color is also the Magpie Swanky DK, and this is colorway Stag, Pun Stag Bunny. And I, I love them. Excuse me, I've got the hiccups. So I cannot wait. This yarn is so soft. The Swanky DK is 80 Superwash Merino, 10 Cashmere, 10 Nylon. They also have a Swanky Sock, which I have a skein of somewhere up there. 
um, that I purchased years ago and have never knit. So I cannot wait. It is taking everything in my power not to cast this on, but I have a few projects that I need to get done for holiday knitting um, that I would really, really like to finish before I get started on this sweater. So again, this will be the Rituals Pullover Magpie Swanky DK. That was, I think, my final Rhinebeck weekend purchase, but not my final purchase to show off. So um, if you follow me on Instagram, you would have already seen this because I put, made a huge post about this. Just a second, let me see if I can find what I'm looking for. Okay, so Neighborhood Fiber Company, if you've watched before, you follow me on Instagram, you'll know I'm a huge fan. I love Corita over at Neighborhood Fiber Company. They're out of Baltimore, one of my all-time favorite yarns. I've knit several things with it this summer. I have several, lots more in my stash. So I had a whole post about this. Um, back in 2016, they stopped dyeing this colorway, but they had a Michelle Obama inspired colorway called 1600 Pen. When Michelle Obama became a knitter this year, um, Corita decided to open up that yarn again, uh, dye it again, um, and make it available for purchase. It is one of my all-time favorite colors. I've never been able to get my hands on it. There's a whole story over on my Instagram. You can go find it um, and read the whole story there. Anyway, so as soon as I saw it was available, I went out, bought a sweater's quantity of DK weight. Um, this is her Studio DK, and the colorway is 1600 pen. Again, it's um, the Michelle Obama, and it was a limited edition. I that she was going to, I stopped making this either on November 3rd, the election day, or when they ran out of supplies. I think they actually ran out prior to November 3rd. So I don't, you can't get this yarn. I really apologize, but I just love it so much. Um, and it happened to arrive in the mail on the day I, I dropped off my mail in or my ballot for the election. So that was super exciting. So I got a sweaters quantity of the DK Studio DK. Um, which again, I'm not sure what pattern I'm going to use yet. It's a DK weight at sweaters quantity. And then I also purchased just one skein of the studio sock, um, in that same colorway. It is amazing. So purple is my favorite color. I try not to have favorite colors. Um, but if, you know, pressed or asked purple tends to be my favorite color. I love this yarn. It's beautiful. I don't know if I'm going to make a hat or cowl or socks or what out of the studio DK. Um, it is 100% organic merino, 400 yards. The studio, the studio sock, that's the studio sock. Studio DK is 100% organic merino, is 275 yards of skein. So again, I have a sweaters quantity of the DK and one skein of the sock. Okay, we're getting kind of close to the end here, but not really. Okay, so I purchased, I made a purchase. Um, the Grocery Girls podcast, Jody and Tracy, I've talked about them a little bit already because I'm knit Josie, Jody's hat. They have started their own website where they sell certain products. And one of the products they sell is um, Pom Poms by Yarn Bowler. Yeah, Yarn Bowler. So they sell these on their website. I went and purchased a few because I've been knitting so many hats. Um, so let me. So these are the four I purchased. I don't know the colorway names, um, but they are all large size pom poms. They all come with um, a rubber um, stopper so that you can um, hold it steady on the top of the hat, and then they're ribbon. So, four pom poms, which I love and I'll be using. I actually was thinking that this one might look really good on. My miss babs anyway okay pom-poms that was from grocerygirlsknits.com here's okay all of that is linked below uh oh i forgot i ordered more from neighborhood fiber company this was also a rhinebeck weekend purchase i forgot about this this colorway is also no longer available man i suck um they had a special Rhinebeck Weekend. It was only available on Rhinebeck Weekend. Colorway called Motorhouse. 
So I bought this in a new to me base. I have never tried their rustic fingering base, which is 100% merino wool and it is a single ply. So I got two skeins of that thinking I will do a large shawl. Um, there's a couple of fingering weight shawl patterns out there that require about 800 yards. So that is my plan for this. And they, these are 470 yards gain. So I've got plenty of yarn here. I've got almost a thousand yards to do a large scale shawl with. So that is motor house is the colorway. It was their Rhinebeck 2020 yarn. And again, not available anymore, but wanted to show you guys. Um, okay. I'm down to the final three. A few last weekend. Yeah, it came really quick. Last weekend, Tommy over at Moonstone Dye Works. She also has the Squirrel Pie, Produ Squirrel Pie Productions podcast. Um, she dyes yarn under Moonstone Dye Works. She had her Halloween fall update. She had beautiful, three beautiful colors that I just had to have. Um, so I bought a skein of each in DK. Um, this is her hard cider color. It's yellow and got those greens, little bits of orange. This one is called Falling, and it looks like falling leaves. It's got a gray base, oranges, reds. You know how I'm feeling about oranges lately. Um, little bits of green and blue. It's gorgeous. Moonstone Dye Works. And this one is her Pumpkin Pumpkin colorway. And it's pumpkin-y, but it's got some darker speckles, some green and black speckles. Oh, it's so good. So this is all on her Merino DK, which is 100% superwash Merino, 230 yards of skein, 231. Um, these will probably be hats. Uh, I, though when I put them together, I feel like they go really nicely together, but I, so I thought about finding a DK shawl that I could put them in, but more than likely they'll just be hats, which will be fantastic because this yarn is gorgeous. It's very soft. So that is from Moonstone Dye Works. And then final purchases get them out of the bags here. I have one more Gilmore Girls inspired purchase. Sorry for all the crinkling. Um, okay, so Legacy Fiber Arts. I have purchased their yarn before. I've showed it on the podcast. Um, I bought several things from them. I bought a skein of their Candy Apple colorway on Steel Toes, which is their 7525 Merino Nylon. And it's this very pinky red color. I love this. I had considered buying a sweaters quantity of this yarn for a love note sweater i ended up going with a different i actually ended up going with neighborhood fiber company because it was more true red but i love this yarn and i've always admired it and they had it up in the shop for their fall update over rhinebeck weekend so i made a, a purchase um this will probably be socks so that is steel toes candy apple and uh my final gilmore girls color they have long had one of their most popular colorways is called Kirk. He's a character from the show. If you're unfamiliar, it's beautiful. I love this color. I've wanted to get it, but I always thought, well, I should just throw it in when I make a big purchase and I hadn't done that in a while. So uh, Cozy Toes is the base. It's their 801010 Superwash Merino Cashmere Nylon. It's super soft. It's beautiful. It's got lots of these fun green and blue speckles. Um, gray base with some oranges and pinks in there. So this is just gorgeous. I have no idea what this will become. I love it. Another Gilmore Girls inspired colorway. So, okay, final, final thing. Um, it's actually two different dyers. I love the Fleur shawl by Espace Tricot. Um, it's a DK weight shawl with then you then hold uh, Zuri Alpaca or Mohair um, as a contrast. So I was out on the Stank, wow, Plank and Stella website, and they had these. This was a one of a kind colorway, so it's a, a, not a repeatable colorway, um, but they had these three skeins, and I fell in love. So it's Plank and Stella. Um, it's 100% superwash merino, the skeins are 231 yards a piece. I need three skeins. It is gorgeous. Um, but I didn't find on their website, they didn't have a lot in stock and I couldn't find a mohair that I love to go with it. So I searched, I waited till I got it in person so I could actually see, you know, what the colors would look like in person. And it's got so many pinks and greens and the creamy white in there. I just love it, but I couldn't decide what mohair to do. So when I was out on the, uh, Legacy Fiber Arts website, I 
uh, they had mohair in stock. So I purchased three different colors thinking, well, I wasn't sure which one. So I purchased, which would go best. So I got all three knowing that lots of patterns call for hold a mohair with it. Um, there's a lot of really amazing hat patterns out there now that have, you know, hold a DK or a fingering weight and then hold a mohair with it. So I knew that this would not go to waste. Um, so I got three, the three different colors to kind of see what I needed or see what would go with best. So I got vanilla bean, which is just their, their creamy, white. I got uh, cotton candy, which is beautiful pink fluff. And then I got um, guac. So I couldn't decide. And then I was like, I'll get them. One of them will stick out. One of them will be perfect. And then the other two I'll use for hat patterns. Well, they're all perfect. Every single one of them. I mean, so I'm going to wait till I wind this up to decide. My plan right now is to, if, if the green, if, if there's not too much green, then I'm gonna go with the guac because I feel like um, the guac will be harder to match with other projects later down the road where I just need a skein of mohair than the pink and the white will. If that doesn't work, then I'll probably go with the pink and then the white and the green will be the extras. I don't know. If you have an opinion, please indicate below. I don't know what to do. Not that I'll cast this on anytime soon, though I want to. I really want to wind this yarn up today. I'm not going to, but I want to. Anyway, okay, so that's it. That's it. That was 36 minutes of me talking about yarn purchases. Yeah, that's embarrassing. Okay. Final thing, podcasts. There are a million of them out there. Uh, thank you for watching mine, if you are, <laughs> if you've made it this far. Um, there are a few that are new to me that I recently found that I wanted to chat about. So uh, I'm going to get my phone here so that I don't forget which ones I'm going to talk about. So I want to talk about Michael over at Peace for Peace Crafting. I'm gonna put it down here below because it is peace like a piece of cake, the number four, and then peace like peace crafting. Um, and you can find him under that on Instagram and YouTube. He's got a video podcast. I think he has two or three episodes up now. He's great. I've been friends with him on Instagram for a long time. He's one of the kindest people. Um, he was one of the first people to reach out to me when I started my podcast, telling me how much he enjoyed it. So his podcast is great. Um, he's a black male knitter. There aren't a lot of them podcasting. It's great to see um, a different point of view from your own um, and what kinds of projects he's picking for his his knitting life. Um, it's fantastic. Uh, check it out. So Peace for Peace Crafting. And then Rosberry Crafts. And I'm so sorry, I don't know her first name. Um, please check her out. She's amazing. I think she's got three project or three episodes up now. Rosberry Crafts on both Instagram and YouTube. Um, I'll put it down here below so you can see. I will also have linked to them in the show notes. There are lots and lots of amazing podcasters out there. So ch check out ones that don't have 40,000 followers, you know, um, some of my favorite podcasts now are the ones that, you know, have a couple hundred fo followers, um, subscribers. They have lots to say. They inspire me with their color choices and their projects they're picking. Um, oftentimes they're posting, uh, or they're talking about projects that I've never heard of, um, or yarns that I've never heard of or haven't seen in person. So it's, you know, there's so much out there. There's so much diversity in the crafting community. We really need to make sure that we're giving love to all the crafters. Um, and I, I love the big ones you've seen. I mean, the people I've talked about already today. Um, but you know, make sure we're giving love to, to all the crafters. So check those out piece for piece, Michael and Rosberry crafts. Again, I apologize. I cannot remember her name right now and I didn't put it in my notes, but please check her out. Um, okay. So those are the podcasts and the last little thing chatter. Um, life has been crazy busy. Uh, my mojo has been coming and going, uh, which means that my depression has been coming and going. Um, I just think it's important that we talk about that and we not hide it under pretty pictures on social media. Um, life is difficult for everyone right now. And, um, 
you just need to cope the best you can. I'm coping the best I can, whether that's knitting or buying every skein of yarn ever in existence, uh, which is what I've done here. Um, that's how we get through. Um, make sure you're checking in on your friends and your family and your loved ones. Um, drink your water, as I said earlier in the podcast. And just know that, um, you know, I'll be back when I can and when I have things to show. And I hope that it's sooner than eight weeks like this last time, but that I'm thinking of all of you. Uh, a big, huge, heartfelt thank you to the several people who reached out to me and checked in on me and uh, told me how much they missed the podcast. You don't know how much that means to me. Um, it it really kept me going. And also a huge, huge thank you to the ladies um, and actually everyone. Um, we, it's not always ladies who join my Omaha Knit Night knit groups. We have a virtual knit group. Um, they started as in person, but now we go virtual. We meet Thursdays and Sundays. I always post the information on Instagram. Um, we have a Facebook group if you are interested in joining. It is open to anyone, no matter where you are. So if you are available at the times that we do our little Zoom um, and you can join in, we'd love to see what you're working on and to chat with you about crafts and your life and you never know what we're going to talk about. It's always, always a surprise. Um, but we are a diverse group of crafters. We work on all kinds of things and um, come whenever you uh, feel like come as you are. So uh, everyone is welcome over at Omaha Knit Night. So thank you again so for joining me. I hope you all are doing well. And until I see you again, bye.